No, I'm afraid I can't just send you more aid. Without condition. Shame on a nigga! Uh, uh, what? You try to run game on a nigga! No, 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 what'd you just say? Who buck wild with the trigger? No, 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 no. Uh, are you just quoting Wu-Tang Clan? North Korea is obviously in the news right now. And he, he, here's a couple of things. I think it is absolutely criminal the way the media is trying to lay this at the feet of Donald Trump, as though he, yeah. he, he has had absolutely zero to do with creating this crisis up until this point. Now, that being said, I think he's a bit like a police officer who doesn't know how to de-escalate a situation. You don't want to go out and drop the verbal nuclear bomb. Right. <laughs> you want to keep it close to the chest. So, so it, not necessarily being handled really well, but the media wants to go beyond the bend and say, this is Donald Trump's fault. No, actually, there are, uh, there's a slew of decisions and policy enactments that have led to this current crisis, okay? And you need to understand, inaction in and of itself, and often appeasement, as we'll go through this timeline, mm -hmm. is a policy. That's been the policy of the United States, several administrations, for decades now. So <clears throat> let's kind of bring you up to speed as to what has led us to this current conflict directly, because you can go with North Korea, you can go all the way back to the 50s. Yeah. Uh, so you have to pick a point. So basically from 1985 onward, North Korea was subject to an, an, an anti-nuclear prolifer prolifer <laughs> proliferation treaty. Right. So what changed? Proactively, that changed in 1994 under Bill Clinton. So what happened there? Bill Clinton and North Korea signed an agreement where they pledged to freeze and dismantle their old nuclear reactors in exchange for aid to build two new reactors. And at the time, Bill Clinton, this is in 1994, praised the deal, saying North Korea will freeze and then dismantle its nuclear program. South Korea and our other allies will be better protected. The entire world will be safer as we slow the spread of nuclear weapons. Now, this matters because back then he said South Korea and our other allies will be better protected. Why? Because North Korea said they will dismantle their nuclear program. So even leftists before Barack Obama, they, said, ah, not they acknowledged that the world was safer and our allies were safer if they dismantled their nuclear program. What happened after this new policy in 94? Uh, North Korea began enriching their nuclear material anyway. All right, so now you promise. If we let you do this, no new. Bill, Barry, come on. Who do I look like? You know me. You think you promise? Okay, so <laughs> next step on the timeline. Good Let's context. fast forward to 2003. North Korea reactivated a five megawatt reactor uh, capable of producing plutonium. So what, what happened here? They declared later that year, so this happened, we didn't do a whole lot. Later that year, they declared that they had nuclear weapons, which we often ignored. We didn't do a whole lot. But they declared that later that year as a result of this. Now, Kim, what are you doing over there? Georgie boy, I already done told you. You don't need to worry. There's nothing going on here. What the heck? Well, here in America, we're hearing rumbling. Uh, w, I'm telling you. Don't worry about it. Chill, man. Chill. Go enjoy Camp David or something. Or, oh, 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 oh. Georgie, you there? I, I think you're breaking up. I, I'm losing you. Oh, oh, that's a shame. It almost seems as though he has no respect for authority. <laughs> I almost didn't see that way. So we have oh, uh, Bill Clinton opening the floodgates, some inaction from, from George W. Bush, who was dealing with 9-11 at the time. What did this lead to? Well, here's what's important. When I say inaction is a policy, so is appeasement. Because then we have, in 2005, 2007, and in 2012, North Korea asked for aid from the United States, and they promised to stop their nuclear programs and close their facilities. They asked the United States for help, and we repeatedly actually gave them free crap in good faith. And what happened? Well, it got worse, and you have some sanctions from the UN, but we gave them stuff. That was policy for years, even up to 2012. No, 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 I don't like what I'm hearing over there, Kim Jong. Hey, come on, Obama, you're the cool president. I'm cool, you cool, we're both cool, right? Help me out here, you send a Now, I've heard this before, and I've watched you turn it around. Come on, help a brother out, you know. No, 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 I'm afraid I can't just send you more aid without condition. Shame on a nigga! Uh, what? You try to run game on a nigga! No, 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 no. what did you just say? Who buck wild with the trigger? No, 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 no. Uh, are you just quoting Wu-Tang Clan? I'll f*** your ass up. Give me two business days. 
It's cultural differences. <laughs> okay, so, all right, we're gonna sign a deal giving you nuclear capabilities as long as you promise in 1994, and then in 2003, hey, we have the ability to create nuclear bombs. They're bragging about it. We give them free stuff in 05, 07, 2012, and what has this led to in 2006, 2009, 2013, 2016, and twice in 2016? North Korea conducted multiple nuclear missile tests, or they've claimed to add technologies to their arsenals. So what did we do all, after all of these launches? <laughs> Again, twice in 2016, all of this occurred before evil President Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, we either imposed sanctions after we gave them stuff, or we ignored their claims, or we went to the UN, who also imposed sanctions, which were repeatedly ignored. And so this is where we are. This is where President Trump has to step in. Not a crisis he created, but one that he can only do his best, even if it's not the best, to solve. Oh no, Donald! It looks like we have some scary missiles over here! <laughs> but I don't have to use them if you send some more aid, you know. Listen, okay, don't ever call me again. Frankly, I don't have time for your bullcrap. The next time you hear from me is when I'm destroying your crappy little country, okay? Oh, come on, Donald! I think if you're gonna lay this line! No, 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 listen. Listen, seriously. Okay, frankly, who's this stuffer, okay? And so here, <laughs> at le at le you have to give the president, at least it's a, it's a change of course. What I talk about in the, uh, fire, fire and what do you say? Fire, fire and, uh, and fury. Fire and, and fury, fury like yeah. no one else before. No, but you know what? It is a little bit like Les Grossman in Tropic Thunder. At some point, the Viet Cong is on the other end of the phone going, oh, we might have pushed them a little too <laughs> I think far we overplayed here. our hand here. <laughs> Every, that's all I've been doing. Again, since yeah. 1994, we give, we give, we impose sanctions. They don't respect them. They launch some more tests. And now the left and trying to lay this at Donald Trump's feet says, hey, it looks like they have miniaturized nuclear missile, uh, miniaturized nuclear bombs and they can attach them to missiles. So that's what pushed President Trump to respond. All right, if this is the same, let's try something else. It's like having a kid. You keep giving him time out, time out, time out, time out. It doesn't work. At some point, maybe, maybe you try beating his ass. I'm not saying it's morally correct. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the ideal first choice, but it is a choice on the table. I do like that it's not been removed from the table. I don't like that we've shown our hand a little bit. Now, here's something else, though, with this conflict. And I see this a lot. You see it from the left. What gives us the right? Mm -hmm. Well, right, we don't yeah. want to be the police of the world. What, gives, what, what makes the United States so sure that they're, that they're better? First off, I don't want us to be the police of the world. I'm generally a non-interventionist. We'll talk with Stefan Molyneux about that, OK? We don't need to be the world police, but guess what? There are plenty of other countries with nuclear capabilities. We're not concerned with France. We're not putting crazy sanctions on France. The reason we are with North Korea is because this is one of the most heinous evil regimes in history. Well, that's just relative. No, it's not. They've executed people with anti-aircraft guns. They feed people to dogs alive. If you look at their prison camps, Jeez. where they have an estimated 200,000 North Koreans, they're tortured, and by the way, torture over there, doesn't mean they put a face cloth over you and ask where the terrorist bombs are while they pour some distilled water on you. It means forced abortion, starvation, beatings, human medical experiments, and of course, uh, almost impossible hard labor. That's how you know that we're the good guys and they're the bad guys. Now, it doesn't mean that the good guys always have to step in and stop every single bad guy. But let's start off, let's let's at least try, again, common ground. If the left wants to find common ground, don't say, well, Donald Trump is, is horrible at handling this policy. Okay, and by the way, what makes us so much better than North Korea? Now, you lost me. <laughs> you had an argument. Yeah, his rhetoric really won't help. It seems like it could escalate the situation. And by what makes us so confident? What, what gives us the right? What, what makes us think that we have the moral high ground? Well, we don't punch women in the stomach repeatedly when we put them into a forced labor camp to force an abortion. Oh, but Donald Trump has someone from Goldman Sachs in his cabinet. Okay, let's go with that. Hey, this video is taken as a clip from the full show, Daily Show at LotterWithCredit.com slash MugClub, where it's available exclusively $69 a year. That's less than $6 a month, less than two expensive cups of coffee, or you can feed an African child. But what would you want to do? Just buy coffee or join the Mug Club. Daily Show, LotterWithCredit.com slash MugClub. See you there. Don't feed children.